Howdy folks, I broke my game making episode 69, as one does, so if this goes up on a Wednesday in lieu of a normal episode, you'll know I'm still working the kinks out of my load order. So far things seem mostly okay, with a couple of weird exceptions, but since I've had my eyeballs glued to my load order anyway, I figured I'd fulfill the request of one AJ Hildenbrand and make a mod list video. Before I get into the actual mods of the mod list, I want to talk about what my goals are when I'm putting something like this together. Uh, my top priorities usually include long-term stability, performance, both mechanically and personally. I like a more rustic, grounded, weathered feeling, so a lot of my mods reflect that. And verisimilitude, or making it as realistic as possible while still being able to enjoy telling a story with it, which is why I'm not running Frostfall, for example. I'm not someone who spends a lot of time trying to mod things I don't usually notice, so I've prioritized ambience and things that I'll actually use in-game. This is why my mod list has changed so much since Arden's first camping trip at Anga. I also prefer mods that aren't too technical or time-consuming. I already spend enough time with the fiddly bits editing, so while I do occasionally bust out the creation kit, I like mods that don't require constant off-screen tinkering. I think that makes this a beginner-friendly list. Maybe. Uh, my trickiest bit of kit right now is either SKSD64 or Four's New Idols, or Fness. And there are a number of excellent tutorials on how to install and use both of those. I highly recommend both Gopher and Gamer Poets. I've tried to sort this video out as best as possible, but it's not in any kind of installation order. I plan to do another uh, fashion show type video specifically for armor mods because I have a lot of random individual sets which for the most part I won't be mentioning in this video. We're going to be going a little bit fast, but I'll have all of the mod and tool titles on screen and will include an example even if I don't stop to talk about it. So let's get into it. So I've actually split the environmental mods into two different categories. One is static and one is seasonal. The static mods are in play no matter what time of year it is, but I do like to evolve the look of my game as the seasons wear on, simply because it makes sense to me. So the static ones are always in play, the seasonal ones I will have grouped in season order. So my static environmental mods include Obsidian Weathers and Seasons, I used to use Vivid Weathers for the early playlists, but switched over to Obsidian specifically because of the seasonal effects. I also use True Storms, plus the patch. I'm using the Luminous settings because while I love playing with the Spectral setting, it's way too dark for YouTube. Wonders of Weather, which adds rain splashes, rainbows, and shooting stars. Vivid Landscapes because I live in Colorado and our rocks really do be looking like that. Realistic Waters 2. I used to use both the watercolor and normal versions along with changes in Obsidian's lighting presets in order to convey bleaker or more optimistic outlooks by the characters. Nowadays I just go with what looks best. I'm particularly fond of the watercolor waters and fantasy preset. Ross, or rain, ash, and snow shaders. I was using wet and cold for a long time, but this one is less script heavy. Also, at one point early on, I was also using Verdant, but eventually took it back out again in favor of a better frame rate and fewer conflicts. My seasonal mods are, for Autumn, Vivid Landscapes with the Gold Tundra Ground add-on, and Skyrim Flora Overhaul. For Winter, we have the Winter Overhaul 2019. By the way, this overhaul also makes days shorter and nights longer. I would recommend a snow mod, though. Normally I don't use one, but this mod probably should have one. If there is a next time, I will learn from my mistakes. I'm not using any plant mods for this season, but I am using Vivid Landscapes without the Tundra Ground add-on. Not that you can see it under the snow. For spring, I use Skyrim Flora Overhaul 2 Summer Edition, the Tundra Texture Transplant, uh, by the way, a lot of my visual mods are based on what I've observed from growing up in semi-arid and not quite highlands Colorado. I wanted spring to be very green because around here, as soon as the snow starts melting, things get super vivid and then start turning more golden as the heat comes back. Vivid landscapes without tundra ground. This is so that the parts of the tundra that aren't affected by the texture transplant still look slightly cold and frigid. 
For summer, I use Skyrim Floor Overhaul 2 Summer Edition. And Vivid Landscapes with the Tundra Ground because it's nice and golden and pretty. Models and Textures Static Mesh Improvement Mod A quality world map with roads. Lean Wolf's better shaped weapons. Real bows. Practical female armor. I specifically installed this one for Yarnvita since she picked up Skior's old armor. It has since become a staple. Warmth light armor replacer because it's cold and sleeves are nice. Windsong Immersive Character Overhaul, because I, for one, like the weird-looking elves and slightly rustic face shapes of Vanilla Skyrim. Belly Aches HD Dragon Replacer for the Scala Boys. Enhanced Blood Textures. Ouch. Starsight Eyes for all your glowy eyeball needs. Supreme Vampire Lords. And some new additions. Bedhead vanilla hair replacement and high poly vanilla hair because Kinawa's hair normals somehow broke in the course of filming episode 69, which is why she has an Apache hairstyle in one scene. Also, Apache hair with the salt and wind textures sometimes makes an appearance, but it's rare since I'm such a noob at putting non vanilla hairstyles on NPCs. Arden is the singular exception. Animation. Why, why, Mystic Knight? Third person dual wielding animation. Fall rolling animation, because I was hitting the sneak roll with Arden anyway back in the early days. Smooth running animations, jog, sprint, and jump. This looks like it should be vanilla and gets rid of the weird bow legged jump animation. Dovakin relaxes too. Lightweight head tracking and emotions, which occasionally makes scenes interesting to film. Stop giggling on set, Arden. A Skyrim kiss. I like this one because it's lightweight, the power in your menu is toggleable, it's somewhat adjustable, and works on pretty much any NPC without you having to marry them or go through a long seduction process. Long live the smooches! Armor clothes and gear. I'm only going to be including big replacers and sets here because I've used a lot of armor mods over the years. And like I said, I'm also planning a fashion show. Brigandage. Fur set. Immersive armors. Warmonger Armory. Heavy Armory. Thalmor Armory. Ulog's Legacy. Unique Uniques. Visible Favorited Gear. Face Masks of Skyrim. Wood frame backpacks. Bandolier bags and pouches. Fashions of the fourth era. And winter is coming. And new additions. Modular clothing system. This is kind of still in testing, but we'll see. And wearable lanterns, because we keep running around in the dark with vampires and need to be able to see. This is, of course, something I should have installed about 50 episodes ago, but here we are! Gameplay and crafting. Smilodon. I actually installed this on Ingrath's profile just to test it, but I actually like it a lot. It provides a little bit of realism while letting me get through episodes without dying constantly. Usually. Oh sh- No! We're doing so well, too! Ars Metallica.
honed metal. All right then. Beautiful baubles. More growable plants. This was because I was very bummed when Ingrath couldn't plant the gleam blossom that Arden gave him. Dawnguard and Dragonborn delayed. I suspect there are mods that do this better nowadays, but these are left over from the early playlists. Reasonable movement speed. Your market stall. This is for a test, but also very relaxing. Shout out to see you later for showcasing this mod with Artorius the Blacksmith. Become a bard. A change of face. A book which lets you adjust your character's appearance on the fly. Thundering shouts. Need I say more? I need. Summer Mist Enchantments. NPCs and creatures. And here you are. Amazing follower tweaks. You know where to find me. Convenient horses. Realistic horse breeds. Diverse werewolves collection. More werewolves? I like the big danger floofs, what can I say? One with nature. Realistic wildlife behaviors, which is probably redundant, but it was here before one with nature, so... Splendor dragon variants. This is because I like how mixed up the patterning is, but don't want to deal with, for instance, forest dragons. You want to talk? Looking to stay alive? I'm Why thinking it is another lovely day in Riften. What's next? Hello, friend. Relationship dialogue overhaul. Be careful out there. My favorite drinking buddy. Let's get some meat. Populated cities, towns, and villages. And immersive patrols. Locations, events, and homes. Holidays! This also adds birthdays. They don't change your birth sign, but it's fun to know them anyway. At least it is for me. Beyond Skyrim Bruma? Falscar. It's a shame what happened to Bulvog. I didn't know Ingvar was serious. The House of Troubles. Shout out to Couch Warrior and all the character crusaders out there. The Notice Board. Hidden Hideouts of Skyrim.
Greater Skull Village. Castle Vokahar rebuilt. Glorious Fort Dawnguard. Skyhaven Temple Gardens. The Hideaway, or Inras Cave. Riften Fishing Shack. After seeing it in the passage, I couldn't not have it. Rauta, which actually crashes the desktop on entry right at the moment, but I can live with that being the one prolific bug in my save since it's easy to work around. Snapneck Shack. Treehouse. And Thur's Retreat. Overhauls and Quests. Skyrim Unbound, which lets you choose whether or not you're Dragonborn, among other things. Thunderchild. Better Vampires. I originally had Sacrosanct installed as well, but that's the reason I had to rebuild Ingrath at one point. I'm also not using the NPC version due to some weirdness with Dominique's NPC. Moonlight Tales Special Edition. Apocalypse. Triumvirate. Hunterborn. Campfire. Ordinator perk overhaul. Legacy of the Dragonborn. Helgen Reborn, which I don't actually have enabled right now in case of civil war conflicts, but will be happening eventually, don't you worry. Teldrin Sirius. I was enjoying our travels together before we parted company. I'd be happy to rejoin you for no charge, if you're interested. Pleasant journey, Samuel. Artifacts, the Breton Paladin, which I have since taken back out of my load order, but it was important for Kinoa, so it gets a mention. 
Winter Sun, Faiths of Skyrim. And I have a whole section for my Civil War mods, so here we go. Civil War Equipment Organization. Immersive War and Violence. This adds a little aftermath scenes and some grotesqueness in places. Skyrim Battle Aftermath. This adds the big aftermath scenes. While you were gone, no bandits, neutral white run, basically means the correct soldiers actually occupy the right forts. After the Civil War, Siege Damage Repairs. Another one that's in the load order but hasn't happened yet, obviously because we're still doing the war. Tools and Fixes. Four's new Idols of Skyrim, also known as Ephnis. Crazy Jester makes me want to wash my brain. Beth I and I, which is why I don't have a compass. I like as little HUD as possible in my games. Lazy Voice Finder, shout out to the panicked mug for saving my life with this one. Thank you, Verolda, I'll be in council for a bit. Very good, sir. SKSC64? Obviously. The Skyrim unofficial SE patch. Sky UI. Body Slide and Outfit Studio, of which I really only use Outfit Studio and at that poorly. No Creation Club news. <laughs> no more Radial Blur. Race Menu Special Edition. XP32 Skeleton Replacer, mostly because it's required by other things. Fast Travel Speed Fix. Dude, where's your smelter? Which adds smelters where there would logically be smelters. Jackson's Renamer. And Jackson's Repositioner. Shout out to 57 Strudel for turning me to the dark side. No Falling Leaves, which removes random screen debris. SSE fixes. Riften is no longer a laggy mess. Yes! And, included for the sake of humor, my own mods. None of which are available yet because I'm a complete noob at actually packaging mods. Nightmother is Mafala, a tiny change I made for Ingrath that replaces the Nightmother's short name with Mafala for the subtitles. Various notes and letters, including the alternate Death to the Pretender Dark Brotherhood contract. Clean up your Vokahar. Cleans up Harkin's mess. Moat, the friendly magic anomaly that got lost in the various resets. I might try to resurrect it at some point. Wild Hunt spell, basically just the effects for Ingrath's Wild Hunt ability, which I lost in my latest game reset and need to rework. All of the Dawnbreaker's NPCs. I built all of them myself, following Beofish's method, and with a bit of troubleshooting from the man himself. Thank you, Beofish! Someday I might try to turn this into a fully voiced follower mod, but the work involved in that would be enormous if I were to go to, say, Inigo-type levels of dialogue. Especially if I wanted to make both vampire and non-vampire versions of Arden and Ingrath, and especially if I want to have them all interact with each other and or mods like Beyond Skyrim, Falskar, or even Inigo. All of which would be my ultimate goal, but again, that would be a lot of work.
So I hope you enjoyed this mod list. I hope you got some inspiration for your own mod list. And I hope I didn't go too hoarse during the course of this recording. I, I think I will have my actual game reconstructed very soon. So I hope to see you later. Take it easy, y'all.